G'day YouTube, welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. Today you will be able to learn how to plot financial market data um, with Plotly creating moving average terms and a volume subplot. So let's just jump straight into it. So following on from importing data in our last tutorial, today we're going to be plotting this stock market data. Um, we're going to import the dependencies first, so let's just get cracking. So first thing we're going to do is import date time as DT. We're going to import pandas data frame or pandas as PD. We're going to import pandas data reader. Um, and actually we're going to go from pandas data reader import um, data as PDR, just like last time. And we're going to import Plotly. Now, if you don't have Plotly uh, worth downloading, go check out my last video on how to do that. Import Plotly.graph objects. Graph objects as GO and then um, from Plotly subplots dot subplots, um, we want to import make subplots. Awesome, so there are our dependencies. Um, remember for uh, Plotly offline in Jupyter, we need to initiate um, Jupyter notebooks so we can actually see the graphs here. So that's init slash notebook underscore mode and we just go connected equals true. And we also just want to run that. Excellent. So now we're on to step number two, get stock market data. So this is using the pandas data reader, same as last time. We're just gonna specify date range and then pull in a stock of our choice. Today we're gonna to be using CBA. So end, we're gonna use date time now uh, for the start. We'll just go um, date time uh, 2015, January the 1st. So for the pandas data reader, so PDR dot, um, let's use get data Yahoo. So remember we spoke about these modules and how you can use pandas data reader in the last tutorial. So if you missed that, please feel free to go back. But pretty much we specify a stock and we've chosen CBA for ASX stocks, you need to use .ax and the start and end date. So let's just return the head of that data frame and make sure everything's doing what it needs to be doing. Excellent. High, low, open, close, volume, adjusted, close. So now we need to construct some moving average terms. So for this, we're gonna be using the pandas.rolling function. So here we can specify a window, um, a look back period of which we wanna compute the mean um, to get that moving average term. So let's um, just jump into it and I'll just show you what it looks like. So to create another column in this data frame, um, we're going to go DF column name, moving average 50, we'll call that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the close price information and we're gonna use rolling. So dot rolling, so here we specify a window and we're gonna call that 50. So for that 50, we're then going to compute the mean. So let's just hit that and we'll plot the head of that data frame. So as you can see, we got these bunch of NA values. Now this is from the start of the data frame. So let's just say that we made this 10 and we make the head plot 20. You can see that there's NAs, um, so not a number for um, 10 days. And that's because you need 10 um, uh, bits of data before you can actually determine the mean. What we can do here is that we can actually say that we don't want a minimum period so that we can get um, just an average value for these periods. 
just for consistency. So we can specify min period equal to zero. And now plotting that again, you can see that it's just for these days where there's less than 10 or whatever window do we choose, they're, uh, they're just gonna use as much information as they can. So let's change that back to 50 now. I just wanted to show you an example of, of that NAN. So let's get the 50 and let's also plot the 200. So with a window of 200. So just plot in the head there, excellent. And check the 200's okay, excellent. Okay, we're gonna get cracking into the figure now. So to do that, we're gonna use make subplots. So remember the aim of this is we want a subplot um, beneath our chart, our, our price chart of volume. So that's why we're using this make subplots. So the rows are therefore gonna be two. We want the graphs above each other, um, below and above, and we want the columns to be one. So we want them to share um, the X axes, not the Z axes, the X axes. So we'll call that true. Um, we want the spacing between them um, to be something that at least we can read the title from. So let's just define a ratio of 0.1 for now. We can change it later if we want. Um, we want to define the subplot titles. So that's gonna be, um, let's call the top one with the price chart CBA and the bottom one is going to be volume. And the last thing you wanna specify is how far you want this, um, the width of this graph going all the way out to the edges of the uh, figure or kind of in the middle. So let's just go for a middle, middle ground, row width. And we wanna specify 0 0.2, 0 0.8, or maybe 0 0.7, um, because we might have a key on the right hand side. Excellent, so now that we've defined that figure, let's actually add some information to it. So to do that with Plotly, um, we want to be adding the candlestick data from Plotly um, attribute. You can uh, give that a Google. It's, um, it's going to look pretty cool. So fig.add trace. So we want to add a trace to this already made figure. Now the, the trace that we want to add is going to be go.candle candlestick. So for the plotly candlestick function, we can specify the x axis. So the x axis we obviously want as the index of our data frame, which is the dates. So x equals df index. So for the open, we want to be able to specify the open column um, for the High, we want to be able to specify the high column. So let's just let's just copy that. High column. Um, you guessed it. The low we want to be the low column, and the close we want to be equal to the close column. So pretty simple. Um, we can also decide what we're gonna name this and of course we'll name this candlestick type of graph the open, high, low, close. So pretty pretty simple figure. Um, you'll, see, you'll see how it looks in a second. Uh, name GO is not defined. So I didn't name it GO, sorry. Um, so up here, graph objects as GO please. So run that again run this down here and excellent you can see that it's auto scaled but we have two plots CBA and then a subplot volume which is not volume yet so let's keep cracking so let's first add um, the moving average terms to this um, open high low close uh, you know, candlestick type chart at the moment so the way we're going to do that is just by adding um, normal terms to this graph. So again, we go fig.addTrace and it's gonna be go.scatter plot this time. So the scatter 
in Plotly can either be um, physical points or it can be lines. So by default, it's lines. So again, it'll share the same x-axis, so df.index, the date range. For the y, we're gonna specify that column name. So ma50 for the first one. So what we want there is maybe a marker color um, to differentiate between the two moving averages. So for that market color, um, market color will choose gray, I guess, for the 50. And um, let's name it MA50. Cool. So now that we've done that, we need to specify which, um, which graph it's going in. So here, um, we actually didn't do it, but uh, we should have we need to specify that we want the row to be one and the column to be one. So let's add that information to here. Row equals one, column equals one. So we'll just hit that again. Better, better make a clean figure, otherwise you'll have double up. There we go. Excellent, so you can see there the moving average 50. So while that's fresh, we might go ahead and add the 200. So I've just copied and pasted that. And now I'll hit the 200 column. Better make a fresh graph again. So you can see Jupiter is very easy just to come through and then hit the shift enter. Excellent, so now we have an open, high, low, close graph with our moving average term. So we might change this gray to um, potentially like a light gray so we can differentiate. So the long term will have a light gray color and the old term. So it's doubled up there because of the way that we're executing in, in Jupiter. But there you go. So that's already looking pretty good. Let's add volume to this chart. So right now you can see that, you know, this is just like a slider for this graph. And that's pretty cool. But um, instead of having that functionality, we just prefer having the volume being shown in that bottom subplot. So let's just get cracking on that. So this is gonna be a bar chart. Um, so let's go and do fig dot add trace and we've got go.bar this time. So within the bar graph, again, X is gonna be defined as the index for the date time, always, um, sharing that common access, axes. So for the Y, we're gonna have the volume. So, you know, that, that could be it, but um, we're actually, actually gonna specify the marker color again. So marker color, and let's make it really clear. So we'll just make that red. Um, the other thing that we want, maybe we don't want it showing up up here, because it'll be kind of annoying if we add more traces here. We just wanna take it for granted that the volume's here. So we can remove that from being shown in the legend by going show legend equals false. And now, um, this, this is why we need to specify the row and the column, because now we're gonna choose row two and col equals one. So if we execute that, we should only see the volume being show, showing up in the bottom graph. So that's excellent, but we still have this slider. So we, that, that is something that we wanna get rid of. Um, before we get into that, let's try and update some of the features here so it, it makes it easier to look at. Right now it's looking extremely white in the background and um, we wanna add some you know, x-axis uh, labels and y-axis labels to make the graph easier to read. So the way we can update um, those kind of attributes is with fig.updateLayout. And we wanna start defining some of these terms. So the first thing we can do is add a title. What would a, what would a graph be without a title? Um, so CBA, uh, historical price chart, let's call this. So x axis uh, tick font size. So let's define that, x axis um, tick font size. Let's make it 12. 
for the y axis attributes, um, we're going to call that dictionary. And we're going to specify um, title for the y axis. So title is going to be here, let's call it price, and that's dollars per share, AUD dollars per share. And um, the title size we can specify 14, whereas we might make the tick font size um, the same as the x axis, so 12. Cool, so that, that's, that's already looking pretty cool now. Um, we'll also add some extra information. We don't want this graph to just auto size to the right hand side. Um, I, I know we're just developing in, in uh, Jupyter here, but sometimes it's nice to be able to constrain that HTML uh, graph size um, to a certain number of pixel values or percentage width of your screen. So let's just go ahead and turn the auto size off for Plotly. It's good sometimes, but not always. So. Auto size equals false, we'll call the width equal to 800 and the height is gonna be 500. And the margins are something that's pretty pretty cool to specify sometimes. So that's just a dictionary of, um, of left, right, bottom and top. And we can also define a pad. So we might just put the margins on all of these, um, 50 on the sides, 100 on the top and bottom, and then pad it by like five or something like that. So you, you'll, you'll see the effect that that has in a second. So let's pad that by five. And the very last thing we're gonna do, because I'm using a black background here and this is white, it's a pretty stark contrast. We're just gonna to go to some kind of middle color to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, so we can call that back paper background color. And that's gonna be equal to light steel blue. But again, any of these attributes are, um, are ready. Title size, title font size. Title, font size. There we go. So you can see now that this is already looking a hell of a lot better. So we've got CBA historical price chart. Um, we've got our open, high, low, close, our moving average terms, um, which look pretty awesome. And then we've got the volume specified here. The last thing that we wanna try and get rid of is this slider. Although it's pretty cool, it would be much better to be able to just select um, a part of this graph and automatically zoom in. So let's get rid of that and disable it. So removing it, all we need to do is go fig.update. Notice the difference between update slash layout to up, just update now. And we're gonna go layout um, x axis range slider, range slider, if I can spell. And then we're gonna turn whether it's visible off. So we're gonna make that equal to false. Now, because I'm using Jupyter Lab again, remember. Um, I don't need to do this, but if you are running any other editor, you will need to go fig.show and you will see the graph. So what have I done wrong here? X axes, yes, I want X axes. Great, and you can see here that now we've got our nice uh, plotted chart with the open, high, low, close candlestick data. We can now zoom in here and the bottom subplot also zooms in. So yeah, quite, quite nice what can be done very easily with Plotly and, um, and financial data. So thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe because we're gonna be continuing on from this series doing more impressive things um, with Plotly and financial data. So thank you very much for listening. Hit it, the like button and see you next time.